Today's video, I'm going to show you guys another method of whip finishing that is, in my opinion, uh, a very versatile tool to have on your bench. You can use this as your only method of whip finishing. I don't. I use a traditional whip finisher. A lot of times I use my fingers. But this is awesome for areas that are kind of tricky, like when you're going into a big deer hair or something like that. And if you ever watch a person make fishing rods, this is a tool that they all use on their whip finishes. And uh, one of the most legendary fly tires ever I had the chance to, to tie with. And this is how he whip finishes. And this is all it is. It is a little stick that basically has a, a piece of monofilament tied in. And I'm going to make one and I'm going to show you guys how to make one. Now, all you need is, I like bigger handles. My hands have kind of got issues with sometimes so I, I like bigger stuff to grab onto but a lot of people like smaller so you can take just a typical skewer stick you'd use on your barbecue to make shish kebabs and you can take a pair of dykes and we can cut these things and once you get them cut let me move this camera down a little bit better once you get them cut you can take your shish kebab some thread and being you don't have one of these already, you can start with your bobbin threader, just a regular old bobbin threader. So take your little rod, hold your thread loose piece in your hand, and then start a couple wraps and tie that thread in. Once you get that thread in, we're going to tie our monofilament. Now this is just some heavy duty monofilament. I just got a 20 pound monofilament I use for weed guards a lot of times and I'm going to take that piece that I've I've already cut this and I'm going to fold it down and when I fold it down I kind of want to make a tip that's not 100% round as you can see here it's so I'm going to tie my thread in then I'm going to take this monofilament and extend it out past a little ways and I'm going to tie it in And I'm going to build this thing up a quite a bit. I'm going to bring my thread. This is unnecessary, but I'm doing it for the aesthetics of it. I'm actually going to give this to a buddy I'm building a fly tying kit for. So I want it to not look completely like the inside of a homeless man's tennis shoe. All I'm doing is wrapping it just as they would a, a rod. And any rod builder you know, they have one of these. And they use them because they work. Alright, now you're going to actually get to see this method work here in a second. Here's my bobbin holder. I'm going to tie my bobbin holder in. Once I get my bobbin holder in, I'm going to pull out my thread and cut it. Now I'm going to take my thread, if I can see, <laughs> and I'm going to pull it through my bobbin. And once I have that pulled through, I want to make sure I'm not tangled up in everything. I'm going to pull my thread up. And I'm just going to whip that thing through as such. And it took it underneath there. So now I have that whip finished in. I'm going to cut off my tailpiece. I'm going to cut off the initial piece of thread. And, and it'll twist up in your hands a little bit as you're making it, but no big deal. Then take your two pieces of monofilament. So once you have that made, you have a little stick with a loop on it. So once you get that part done, take you some head cement, fingernail polish, lacquer, whatever, and tie all that thread down where it's sealed nice and good. You want that thing sealed as good as possible. 
so that it's not going to unwrap or unfray and be durable for years. The one I have, I've had for, gosh, 20 years probably. So that's all there is to it. So I'm going to move my vise over here. I'm going to set this one to dry. I'm going to move my vise over here and put a hook on it and show you guys just kind of how it works. So i got my vise right here. I've already got a hook in my vise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my vise... Move this in a little closer for you guys. I'm going to take my vise with my thread in it. I'm going to wrap my thread. Okay, so now say I am tying a big fly. And I've got a bunch of deer hair and I have a bunch of crap in the way. And when you try to whip finish, if you're whip finishing, you need that whip finisher tool to be bigger than the, the mass that you're working when you're working with big exotic flies. Like you know, if you're doing some kind of really cool deer hair custom thing. So what, what you do a lot of times is tie it with your fingers, which that's great. But you can take this thing and say you've got your, your, your pattern tied in. So then you just come in and you set this down. And with your bobbin that you can go over everything, you just do a couple wraps. And when you do your couple wraps, pull your thread out to where you have enough to go in. Hold on to your thread so the whip finish stays tight. Then you just poke it back through this tool that you've made. And you want to hold it up as you pull it through. And then it just pulls through and there is your whip finish. It is that easy. So instead of trying to take, well, I'll just tie thread in and, and explain a little better with an actual So, here you have your thread, and you're done doing whatever it is you're doing, so you have your whip finisher. Now, you can see I use a smaller whip finisher, so if I have, you know, a cluster of feathers or stuff flinging back in the way that I don't really want in the way, sometimes it's a little bit hard to get that whip finisher up in there. So, you know, you whip finish like this, and it works. I mean, it's a good tool under some circumstances and most circumstances. But say you have a cluster of stuff up there. Again, I'll show you just how easy this is. You're going to tie your whip finish. Put your couple wraps. Once you get your couple wraps down. Cut your thread. Now this is slower looking because I'm explaining it. But it's just as fast as a regular. Poke your thread back through your whip finish. Keep it lifted up. Pull it right through. And there you have a whip finish pretty much as a rod builder would work I, I would recommend everybody make this tool this tool is an unbelievable asset to have into your bench um, sometimes you get into that awkward deal where things just don't work and this little tool it works as good as anything if you don't have a regular whip finisher this thing will work and if you don't have a bobbin threader or something like that to get started all you gotta do is fold the piece of this in as you're making it and you can pull it right through handy little gadget to have on your bench something easy to make you can use it yourself. So hope this helps.